Hi everyone, today we are live at the eBay offices. Mm -hmm. Very nice, Looking very nice. so wonderful in here for our first Hot Topics of 2019. Now we're discussing something very important this afternoon. If you haven't seen it across social media or in the news, where have you been? Mm -hmm. The 2019 Princess Trust eBay Youth Index Report, which measures young people's happiness and confidence across different areas of their lives has been revealed. And some of the stats are pretty worrying. So we're gonna discuss them and then find out how we can make the lives of young people a little bit better. That's what we need to do today. Mm -hmm. Now, we have some very special guests. Sadly, George Shelley can no longer make it today due to some personal reasons, but we still have a great lineup, including this beautiful lady here, Fern Cotton, one of the nation's most popular hosts, book writer, podcaster, and Princess Trust Goodwill ambassador. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very welcome. much. Hi, Fern. Very happy to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we also have Alice Tai waiting in the wings. She's a British para sports swimmer and gold medalist at the Rio Olympics and the Commonwealth Games. We also have AJ Pritchard, dancer and choreographer, another AJ. Yeah. And one of the professional dancers on the BBC One dance series, Strictly Come Dancing. Mm -hmm. So exciting. And to add to today's guest guests list, we have Kirsty. We have Casey and Anissa as well waiting in the wings. They are some of our incredible Princess Trust young ambassadors. Yay! Yeah, so <laughs> let's get started. Yes. All yeah. right, so Fern, um, oh. based on the Princess Trust Youth Index, um, over half of 16 to 25 year olds say that social media creates an overwhelming pressure to succeed and that young people seeing their friends living their best life on social media, um, they feel then that they're playing catch up to that. Now, um, we've all done that. We've all put our best moments online, sometimes missing out the gritty bits. You know, how do you think that sort of behavior affects young people? And also, why do, you, why do we do that? <clears throat> I think it affects everybody massively. I don't think, you know, I know we're talking about young people today, but I don't think it's exclusive to young people. I know people my age and above who definitely are still impacted in a negative way by it. I don't think there's lots we can do about it right now because we're culturally so used to seeing these sorts of images and in turn comparing ourselves which yeah. is so dangerous to do so i think we all have to take on the responsibility for ourselves and also the young people that we know to go right remember this is not real and i have to tell myself that constantly yeah. this yeah. is a fantasy and even if it looks amazing it's probably about 0.1 percent of the real story mm. um and also to just stop comparing yourself remember all of your good bits your achievements in the past it might not be happening right now when everyone yeah. else is posting great stuff but it doesn't matter and i think that compare and despair situation that we all get into a negative cycle of is very destructive and we all need to really sort of wake up and remember that it's it's not a reality you know social media can be connective and fun and engaging but we mustn't get drawn into that negative comparison bit because it is I can't imagine being young now and yeah. having social media I think it's terrifying and we just need to support young people more talk about it all more yeah. and not get impacted ourselves so that we're strong for the youth as well absolutely I mean, as you said so it's quite unique uh, it's the authenticity um, aspects of it all. We don't all wake up, you know, fully made up, yeah. fully oh, fresh. Babes, I don't. You know, yeah. The opposite of. Yeah, it's not yeah. always, you know, amazing food all the time. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's my issue sometimes because you're, you're on social media looking at what everybody else is doing. You're just like, oh my gosh, you're just on also, it 100%. Also, yeah. AJ, what you must do is follow people that make you feel good. So when you're following them and yes. you're watching their feed, there's brilliant people out there like Bryony Gordon and Porna Bell, like posting really, you know, inspirational uplifting, uplifting very real authentic things about themselves and i think if you follow people who uplift you and make you feel great brilliant if you know you're following people that are always on a beach with their hot dog legs out with a pina colada <laughs> yeah. don't follow them unfollow yeah. Yeah. it's not making you feel good you don't mm -hmm. have to true. follow them yeah you, it's so true fun you have to kind of manage your own social media and you know, really consider what you're looking at, especially little things like try not to look at your phone first thing in the morning. Yeah. We know that statistically that can set your day off to a really bad start. And like, I remember when I was a teenager, I'd get really upset if I wasn't invited to someone's house party or party or gathering, whatever. And now, it's so much worse because you'll <laughs> yeah. see exactly what happened oh, yeah. in that party. That you'll see like all your best friends hugging without you. Like it's so much harder now. So we completely appreciate 
why you feel the way that you feel about these things. But do you still feel pressure? I mean, you've got millions of followers. Mm. Is it? Do you have to like really consider any post you put up, and then and then how people respond to it? Does it affect you? It must do. Yeah. I mean, I like to be responsible for any kind of output I'm yeah. showing people, whether that be on social media, the work that I'm doing, radio, TV, whatever. I take huge responsibility yeah. and and also really a lot of thought around what I'm putting out there. Um, and I try and be as authentic as I can in all those ways. So I don't feel it so much as a pressure. I feel like it's, I have a duty to be honest about who I am and what I'm presenting for the sake of me and anyone else looking at that stuff. Good, because a lot of celebrities don't. And mm. so I think it's great that you do that because it does, it can be really frustrating when you're watching a lot of people who have such a huge audience kind of promoting things that are just yeah, so bad, so yeah. negative, it's, mm. it's unreal. Now, with the state of social media, a lot of people are comfortable putting everything online, whether that is, you know, family, food, like literally everything. And that, in some instances, attributes to their success. Now, you were around way before the social media boom. Way before. <laughs> doing your thing, <laughs> yeah. doing your thing. But doing it so well. Yeah, exactly. But do you think, I mean, how do you think your um, success would have that trajectory of success would have been affected if you had social media. I don't know. Media. I mean, it's an interesting thought. I, I, I possibly would have given up work after about a year. <laughs> so I don't think I could have dealt with that amount of feedback. Mm. I was 15. I don't think I could have yeah. dealt with people oh, right. saying they liked what I was doing or didn't yeah. at that young age. Um, I think I would have made the same choices, hopefully, that I am now, where I'm happy to show bits of myself that I would happily talk to you about now. But mm. then there's other bits like, you know, my kids' faces or whatever that I like to just keep for my everyday home life. Yeah. But I think you just make that decision and work out what works best for you, really. But um, I, I don't know if I could have stuck out my job if there'd been social media at that okay. point. Hey, so really literally don't. that amount of feedback. I don't think any yeah. young person you should deal with that, that amount yeah. of feedback. I think that's probably why also a lot of people just kind of deactivate their account. I mean, Cardi yeah. B is an example of somebody who will just have an issue with someone and just say, right, I'm coming off socials now for a while till things cool down. And a lot of, I mean, Ed Sheeran's done it as well. There was mm. a lot of times when it just gets a little bit too much. And I think you don't have to be a huge celebrity to be be able to recognize that something is not good for you absolutely and if that's the case put your phone away yeah you know get off it for a little while and see if it makes you feel better interact with your friends in real life yes get call so much better yeah. make a yeah. phone call woohoo that would be up. so good yeah. hook up Glenn thank you so much for Pleasure. your incredible advice now we've got our young ambassadors with us here they are <laughs> Kirsty Casey, how are you guys doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. So, let's start with you, Casey. Yeah. Do you agree that social media c creates an overwhelming pressure to succeed? Um, yeah, I do agree with that statement. Um, the main reason why I agree, okay, me personally, I'm not huge on social media. Good um, for you. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. I want to be like you. I don't, I don't really use it. And I, I try to keep away um, from following people that I feel like I might compare myself to. Um, but I know obviously in today's day and age with how big social media is, it's very hard for young people to do so. Um, and obviously there are a lot of people that do sort of like, you know, the pina coladas and hot dogs and whatnot. Yeah. Um, like your in bed. <laughs> yeah. You know, in that, that, are like, that are definitely like that. And, mm. you know, it's, you know, kudos to them. They're successful in what they do. But at the same time, I feel like they have to understand that, you know, especially if they have a large audience, they have to watch what they're actually posting because it can affect, you know, the, the younger audience. You know, they're still learning. They're still growing up and, and um, you know, they've got their whole life ahead of them. Um, so, yeah, I do. I can see why that number is where it's at, basically. Mm, it's terrifying. It shouldn't there. just be about showing off. Either. No. It shouldn't just be about gloating about how great your best life is. That's not what it should be about. What is this best life thing? <laughs> like what your best rubbish. life. Close your eyes, think about your best life, and that's it. But as you rightly said, you know, we aren't living our best life all of the time. That's no, not a we're realistic. Not it's not a realistic picture. And um, just from you know this conversation, you know, like what you said, Neve, you said this before. You know, exercise the mute button. <laughs> you know, there's loads of people who we all follow who yes, get a I little found bit that mute too button, much from time to time. And I've <laughs> muted everyone I work with. <laughs> I'm joking. But I've muted people that I would, in my industry, 
sort of compare my career with that would make me go, oh no! Wish I had that. You know, Wish, yeah. you're, I've still got you. Um, <laughs> you're the lucky but, one, baby. We'll know, see how long. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a real friendship. But then I think that's what you need to consider is how real is that friendship? Mm. And if it's something that does make you feel really sad and really low, which clearly a lot of it is, then just mute away. Yeah. You don't have to unfollow. You can mute. Yes. They'll never know. Follow with exactly. caution. They'll never know. Follow with caution. Now, um, a third of the people that we spoke to think that social media makes them feel that they can have a voice for their generation to influence positive change. Well, that's the gorgeous. Other side of things, yes, you know. Love that. that. So, um, Kirsty, do you believe social media can be, you know, used as a force for good? I think it definitely can. You just have to sort of use it sparingly. And so, I mean, I know I am from Warwickshire. I mm -hmm. went to uni in Sheffield. I had a year abroad in Japan. Now I live in Bristol. Social media is a really great way of me staying in contact with all of those friends from different places that otherwise I just wouldn't get to see them anymore. So it's definitely got its good sides. Yeah. But when you find yourself just scrolling for hours and hours going, oh, they're Endless on holiday, scroll. that's nice, mm. oh, I wish yeah. I was doing that, it's not so great. And ultimately, you know, some of the things which we inadvertently have problems with, the Lambos, the watches, the whatnots, the holidays on the beach, that's defined as success. Yes. So, you know, what would you guys define as success mm. from, our pers from our own sort of perspectives? Mm. How Watch would we that. define success? Casey, beginning <laughs> with you, sir. <laughs> um, I think it's more just finding something that you yourself can be successful at and what you enjoy, whether it's, you know, yeah. playing games. Like, eSports is huge now. So, yeah. you know, the gaming market is like a multi-billion dollar market. So, you know, if you enjoy playing games, you know, train, whether it's like a Rainbow Six Siege or Counter-Strike, whatever you enjoy, yeah. you know, train and... Should I be know, following your Instagram? <laughs> 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 it is very much yeah, largely games, <laughs> so, not gonna lie. Um, but, you know, just finding something that you yourself enjoy and, you know, just be successful at it and, you can inspire other people to be successful at it too. So it starts with you. Yeah. I think you're so right. It's what you enjoy. It's not what you get out of it. It's do you go to yes. work or whatever capacity it is, and do you enjoy it? Like that's success. Imagine doing a job where you got loads of stuff but you hated it. Yeah. That's not success. That's terrible. Yeah. Mm. That's Kirsten. enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it. It's so true. Yeah. Well, I guess success sort of in purest form is just happiness. It's like yes. you happy. It's too often success is seen from other people looking at you and going, "Are you successful?" Whereas you're the only one that can answer that. You say, am I doing what I like? Am I happy? Is this good? If yes, then yes, you are successful. Absolutely. You're so right. And I think you could find out in so many different ways that sometimes it's just such simple things like being around your loved ones or being with your family a bit more or being with your friends a little bit more. And that brings you so much more than just kind of without a doubt showing off mm. about things Fern, that aren't real. Your definition of success. It, it goes back well, to your feeling Casey of success, said, I it's, say. it's enjoying it. You know, I feel like in the last couple of years, I'm really doing what I want to do and I'm happy doing it. And I might have done bigger stuff in the past, TV shows, or it might have made more noise or, or, or looked more glamorous, or whatever. I don't care about any of that. I enjoyed bits of it, but what I'm doing now feels juicy and impactful and I'm getting a kick yeah. out of it and a buzz and I'm connecting with loads of interesting people and I'm able to help people and you know that feels amazing so that mm. to me is success it I is. don't think it should be measured by oh how many times you've been to the Maldives oh never yeah. do you know what I mean gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah but have you so true. Have, have I mean I'm, I understand where you're coming from um, and that's partly to do with maturity as well because you know you've yes. achieved what you've what you've set out to do um, it, does it change then your view of success or I think I mean for me personally I can't yeah. talk for everyone but you know I'm approaching 40 <laughs> and um, and I've had kids and I think my perspective on life is vastly different to yeah. what it was in my 20s absolutely yeah. and that I'm not saying that in a patronizing way to any young person I'm saying it in a way that you of course change and yeah. evolve through experience and <clears throat> and you'll have good and bad times that then end you up in a, a place where you kind of know exactly what you want out of life. Yeah. You might already know when you're, you know, a young person and you've had a, a you know, a tricky life mm. or a life where you've overcome a lot of challenges. But for me, it was certainly later, it was in my 30s that I really started to get to grips with what yeah. I wanted. So true. No, I think it's encouraging for people to hear, actually, because you feel so lost when you're in your teens. I felt really lost in my in my 20s as well, my early 20s, just so confused. And, you know, there's so much going on because you're trying to figure out who you are, where you fit in, what you mm. want to do. Yeah, and that so pressure, 
coupled with social media pressure can be a lot to deal with. But I like what everyone's saying here. There's this kind of running theme about things rewarding you and a lot of that. And I like what Fern was saying about, and I think we're in a similar position where we do a lot of giving back, you know, things like working with the trust, for example, our young ambassadors do the same thing. It's nice to find something that you can be passionate about that you know helps people. Yeah. And I think social media is great when it can get behind a big campaign, you know, and raise a lot of money for a charity yeah. or something. So it's not all bad. No. It isn't. But listen, we must say thank you to our amazing guest today. Indeed, indeed, yes. indeed, indeed. Our um, wonderful young ambassador. Ambassadors Kirsty and Casey, thank you so yeah, much that was for you. joining Great. us. Well Keep done, doing guys. the brilliant stuff you do with the trust and the beautiful Fern Cotton. Thank oh, you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so, so, so much.